good hello good hello good hello guys we're uh we're gonna build um the what are we doing i don't know if it's all counting here anyway hello again hopefully everybody's seeing this everything's good everything's awesome uh, we are going to be building a FM transmitter today for our quote unquote what the hell was that? Friday Let's Build. So very excited about this. We've been talking about this for a while now. Um, before we get into that, well, let me get these off because I can't actually see anything with them on. So um, <clears throat> today we are actually going to be filming a mukbang. Want to get that out of the way? filming, recording a mukbang, so that'll post sometime uh, Saturday or Sunday, and we're going to try and post it in the afternoon, evening, Filipino time, so uh, look out for that, that should be cool. I hope that everything is running correctly. Oh, that's why, because I don't have the, the live chat open, hold on, let me get the chat going here. Hey, Jared, hey, Fred. Everybody's here today. Got it. Okay, so let me uh, let me scroll back up here. Get my chat to an appropriate size. Should have done this stuff beforehand, right? Before going live. Okay, so uh, let's switch over to our scene here. So this is a miniature FM transmitter. I went ahead and I laid all the parts out last night so that we don't waste a lot of time. Um, putting everything together and laying things out because that takes forever. Let me get my... Jeez. Okay. Got my fancy, fancy dandy vice here. Alright. <clears throat> Let me get my stuff out of the way. Alright, so basically what we're going to do, there's a, there's a couple principles involved, in, and let me talk through the principles first. So I uh, prototyped out the circuit here. This is basically an, a microphone circuit powered by a 9 volt with um, a coil, which is then also backed up by this adjustable potentiometer, not potentiometer, adjustable um, capacitor. And it's a dual transistor radio, basically. Dual transistor, not a radio, dual transistor transmitter. So this all works. I've tested this out, um, did a little debugging on it. That was fun. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was a whole process. So why, as you can see, I've got both my prototype board here and I've got my parts here. So generally what's recommended is if you're going to do any prototyping, circuitry, whatever, is that you, um, you build it up on the breadboard first, get it working, and then you transition it over to a perf board, something like this, that you're actually going to solder the parts onto but you don't want to pull the parts off of your breadboard because this is working, right? So don't mess with that. So we're going to put the breadboard aside here, leave that out of the way. So this is our, this is everything, our, um, this is all of our parts we need to build this FM transmitter. So what I'm going to do is starting from here, from the microphone, I'm going to add it to my perf board and solder it in place. You notice that this is just a board with holes on it. There's no, there's no leads or anything like that, so we've got to build the leads up ourselves. This is this is a bit more um, rudimentary. The kits that we normally have been working on have the, the lines already etched into the board, so all you have to do is place the part and solder it in place with a nice clean solder. This is going to get a little bit more messy because we're basically going to have to use metal and solder jumps to, to jump the parts together, right? In these, see all these lines here? These lines impart connection, right? So, all right, this is way too big of a, of, of a perf piece, but I figured I'd start with that and I'd cut it down to size. Easy, right? All right, <clears throat> let's move things around a bit. Oh, nice. All right, so here's my perf board. And what I want to do, Jesus, there we go. Every week we play this game. What I want to do is um, I'm going to start with the microphone and work my way um, work my way down to where the power is going to be. So the mic is going to be up here, and I'm actually going to put him up in the corner. And a couple of things to note: the electrolytic microphones are um, positive, negative. They're uh, sensitive. What do they call that? 
the term for that, sensitive, uh, polar, they're polarity uh, sensitive. So basically, your ground, it goes to the frame of the, of the mic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend the leads down, like so. Not too far because I don't want to ground out the positive. And I'm going to go right about there. That's where I think it's going to be the best. And then I'll... Oh, are they? Colorado's getting a lot of snow. Oh, man. That's all news to me. I haven't been talking to any... Oh, you know what? No, I, I have a friend that's in there, that's um, in Colorado right now, so I should probably send him a message and be like, hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> How are you loving life right now? So I'm just going to solder this onto the back really quick. And what I'm going to end up doing is just lay down a bit of a bead. And then I'm going to hold it in place. Okay, come on. I have a feeling this perf board is going to be a bad decision. But yeah, this is kind of what I expected. Yeah, okay. We're scrapping the perf board for a bit. Okay. This is why it's always a really good idea that you have a robust set of, uh, of parts. Let me show you my part box or one of my part box. Whenever a Radio Shack goes out of business, I, uh, I go and I get <laughs> as much crap as I can. So I have these little mini, look at these, little mini printed circuit boards. There you go. So let's print it onto this guy. Well, not print it, but let's prototype onto this. So, yeah. This is the bottom, right? This is the little copper lead. This is where we're going to solder. This is the top. So, ready? Snappy snap. Holy crap. Eight inches in Wyoming? Yeah, you got to love that. But it's the global warming. Um, for shits and giggles, I also have a project box. And guess what? They line up exactly. The pieces line up exactly. So, um, I think I'm going to end up using this project box, possibly, if I can get a 9-volt battery in it. But for the sake of, of doing this um, in a way that, that utilizes the standoffs, I'm going to build it um, with that in mind. So, that gives me a bit more space to work with. That's nice. I'll take it. <clears throat> So now, hopefully, I should just be able to tack this into place. Wait for it to dry. Good. Okay, tack the microphone in place. As always, make sure you have some angled cutters here. And we're just going to clip the leads. Okay. All right, next. <clears throat> next is the um, resistor that connects the positive lead on the um, microphone to power to the 9 volt. So, as I've mentioned, I'm going to use. Use the pliers to bend it over. And then we're going to go. Again, I've got plenty of space to work. So I'm not. Although I don't want to be jumping a whole lot of crap all over the place. So I am going to get this out of the way a bit. Beautiful solders. You know what's a really funny thing that I've noticed? And then now remember, hang on to these leads, right? Because this is what we're going to use to jump the connections. 
um, I have noticed that almost every video I go to that features somebody soldering something, it's just people bitching about their soldering skills. Oh, the solders are horrible. God, you don't know how to solder. Oh my god, why are you doing this? Just, just stop. Just stop. You don't know how to solder. It's like, god, I hate... I hate the internet sometimes, and the, the solders are fine, most of the time they're just totally fine, but people just get so bitchy about things. Like this faux elitist crap that I just hate sometimes on the internet. So I'm going to push this, hold it, this is the first capacitor, okay, hold it into place, it's a bit hot, yowza. Everybody's like, oh yeah, this guy's solders are horrible. Not me, I mean, I have had somebody say that to me before, but um, I was watching this guy, Colin, who did a bunch of videos for uh, Make Magazine, and he had this really, really cool video, like really cool video. So what do I want to do now? So, um, can you see? No, you cannot see. So at this point, there's a branching off of this capacitor to get to positive and negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and branch that right off at the end. Branchy branch. I don't want these guys to occupy the same hole, obviously, but, um, okay, come on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the, uh, that's kind of the joke. It's like, oh, well, you're going to get dry connections and bridging and blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm just faffing about here. Relax. I mean, my solders are pretty damn good. The problem, and, and we're going to see this, we're just tacking right now. Tacking the parts on the board. Anybody can be like a super elitist about tacking parts. That's nothing. When you get into actually jumping the leads and making the connections from positive and negative and all that, that's when things get a little bit, uh, oh, don't wanna take that out. That's when things get a little bit gnarlier. And it's like, okay, well, you're just being a dick. All right. I always have to keep my mind right when I'm doing this stuff because unlike a project box, or unlike a kit, this is like free form. This is the most Bob Ross of soldering that you can get, right? That's my favorite thing to, to say with soldering. Soldering's like my little personal zen, right? So here we go, boom. You're basically like taking your own. How can I put my? Uh, maybe a little. Maybe a little resistor lives over here. And a happy capacitor. You know stuff like that. I like that concept when it comes to soldering. I know it doesn't play that well on YouTube for a live stream, but you know, hey, it's almost noon. You guys are due for a nap, right? Okay, so now um, we've come to a spot where I need, I think I'm going to salvage a part. I said, don't salvage parts, but I, I'm actually going to salvage a part. I'm going to salvage the transistors because uh, I don't want to go. So transistors are three-legged components, and usually what happens is you kind of kick back this one leg like that, right? And then use your, your, use your little pliers here to bend it forward. And then that should just fall right, fall right into the breadboard. The reason is um, these two resistors need to jump into into this transistor. So I'm going to put him right like that. Right? Mm, no. Should be okay. 
and again, you, you we can we can always make changes as we need to, right? That's the the fun part of soldering. Oop, that's not a good one. Mm, I don't like that. He's good. He's fine. Just the lighting is, is not great. So um, the transistors have three legs, and usually you're gonna you're gonna tap into one, and then the positive goes to one side, and the negative goes to the other side. And that's how transistors work. But um, you usually have resistors off of them. So you want to make sure that you build your project with enough room that you can get your resistor, which we should be able to, next to it without too much fuss. I may have... Mm, should be okay. Again, just like happy little trees, you can you can make your leaves jump wherever you want to jump them. The interesting part of this project is actually the um, the tuning that you have to do at the end. What a pain in the ass that is! Boy oh boy! I hope that I, I hope that I can get through it. So there's there's lots of ways to tune a transmitter like this. Um, one smart way would be to use a oscilloscope. I don't have one yet. So you have to basically use the, um, the variable resistor, to, which is going to be somewhere here. You're going to have to use that in a screwdriver. The problem is if you have any magnetic, whatever, reactive screwdriver, um, then it's gonna, that's going to affect the tuning, the tuning of your, of your transmitter. So you have to go buy, and this is a bit of a special tool that um, we'll talk about in a second once we get to that point. You have to go buy a, uh, a screwdriver specifically for tuning electrical stuff, which most people don't have. The people who largely did have it were like TV repair people. Most people don't have a need for anything like that. I just realized I don't have a good enough uh, video on the solders. I apologize. Let me zoom in on that now. Let's sort that out. So part of my problem is that I'm too far away from the camera. So I will get closer. That should take care of most of the problem. What kind of brightness are we dealing with in here? So now we have a capacitor. The capacitor is off of the positive leg, or not the positive leg, but the positive side of, of the transistor. So I'm going to put it right there. with my soldering iron here. Don't do that. 
So a couple things I need to buy in the future. I need to buy an, <laughs> an exhaust fan for getting the uh, poisonous fumes out of my face when I'm doing these builds. That would be nice. So we're kind of running out of space here. I did not account for that. Hopefully that's not going to be a problem. I really hope that's not going to be a problem. feels like I'm taking up... It feels like I'm not taking up much space on the board. It's much smaller than my breadboard prototype, but at the same time, like I know I'm running out of space right here, and we're... Ooh. Mm. I may have to move. I may have to get things out of the way, but... Not great. So, I don't know if I can, can I get this? How close can I get this? Let me make sure I'm really showing you guys. Okay, so let's talk about soldering. Since I'm ahead of schedule a bit. Oops, sorry about bumping the camera. So, um, oops, let me stop. So your, shot, your solder should look shiny, right? See how these are all sh uh, shiny? Let me get something to point with. So um, this guy, I held the iron on a little too hot. See how it's browning around there? But all the other ones are really shiny, and nice looking, and smooth. That's what you want. That's what you want for your solders to look. Um, <clears throat> the best way to do that is figure out exactly how long you need to hold the iron to get a uh, to get the solder to flow, and then um, and just kind of do that forever, <laughs> and never and never ever change. Hey, what's up, Shinobi? Shinobi, how's it going? Is that the proper Japanese spelling of Shinobi? I don't know. Okay, this guy, I'm definitely gonna get out of the way, so he's on the. Oh, no wait, I'm jumping ahead. Don't jump ahead, Josh. I have one more capacitor to place. Uh, the Shinobi, you missed the beginning. I'm doing one tonight. And I have been doing mukbangs. I've just been doing them um, live stream wise. So you kind of have to catch them live stream or you can you can watch them after the fact, but they're still, it's still a mukbang. It's still the same thing. Uh, but we are doing one tonight, and it's going to be... I didn't I didn't say what it's going to be, but I'll, I'll spoil the secret right now. It is going to be a uh, Pansip Palabak um, kind of taste-off. For all... So we're going to use... Um, I'm also going to get some Mulliban, uh, because we don't have... We don't have enough places that just do... Just do Palabak. But as some of you guys know, Palabak is like my favorite uh, Filipino food. So that... Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. The spelling of, of Shinobi. So that will be the mukbang for today. We're going to go buy um, a palabak, pancit palabak, um, from all kinds of different places, and then we're going to eat it. <laughs> we're going to talk about which ones we like the most. Okay, so at this point, I've kind of screwed myself a bit. I'm not the best at, at, at building boards this way, but we'll work around it. So I need another transistor, which I will I'll rob from here. Boop. Okay. So I'm actually going to turn this on its side. Turning the transistor on its side is a bit of a, an 
orthodox play, and I hope this doesn't mess with me because now I'm, I'm going off of my prototype, but it's the only way I can do it to get enough space. So, what have I done here? Well, I moved uh, these components. These components all feed into the middle leg on the transistor. So now this positive leg connects to our variable um, capacitor, which I'm going to put here, like so. This guy should be, this should actually work out okay. I'm actually okay with this so far. Oh, come on, I gotta be quick with this one. There's a lot of plastic on those, um, those variable capacitors, so you wanna go quick. It's a pretty bad solder. Oh, come on, buddy. Whoa. All right, burying and solder in three, two, one. That was too much. There we go. If I damage it, should be okay. Well, should be okay. All right, so now, so now, that lead is going to connect to that. That's going to go to the positive. I think I'm going to connect. Mm, no, that was. Mm. Oh, I can still connect the positive and negative there, I think. Wait, what do I want to do this? Let's, let's talk about this for a second. <laughs> I want to make sure I do this right. So the positive can go there, and I can just pull the negative lead wherever I want. So yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, then this guy is going to be off of the... This guy is going to be off of the bottom. I'm going to put the coil right here. Coil's going to go there. And then the bottom lead is going to connect to this guy. How do I want it? I want it like this. <laughs> Back to spreadsheets, man. Thankfully, I am not having to work with the spreadsheets. I haven't had to mess with spreadsheets much in my last couple of positions. Bam. We're down to our last component, guys. Okay, this guy connects to the capacitor and the negative lead on the transistor. And by saying negative, I mean goes to ground. I should be more specific when I say that. No, I'm not an electrician. I'm actually a software engineer but I enjoy little projects like these. So that's why I do them. OK. 
Okay. Okay, step one is almost complete here. Which, just to repeat, step one is tack everything to the board. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. We're not done yet. I, I, I lied. So now, actually, so this guy is going to connect to that post. Well, that post needs to also connect to a coil, which I am going to reuse the coil, and I'm going to reuse the antenna, and I'm going to reuse the power. This coil is working, so why mess with a good thing? Okay, so this coil is supposed to go to battery positive, and okay, so the coil is going to go right here, like so. So the coil is used to control um, or set the oscillation. Uh, the coil is part of the oscillating part of the transmitter. And then the other part that controls the oscillation is this uh, variable capacitor. So we use a screwdriver to tune that. OK, so this end's, this end's going to go to positive. This end is, so the antenna is going to go right next to it. Hello, Jbelux. All right. Okay, so now, all right. So that's that's mainly the circuit. Okay, we got our antenna, which I'm gonna kind of route out of the way for now. So now I've got to decide where I want to plug in or hook up my my power. So I think I'm gonna hook up the positive uh, right here. So if I'm this all kind of is going to route to positive, all this stuff right here. And then everything down here is going to route to negative or ground. So, um, so yeah, let's do it like that. That works for me. So I got a bit of uh, solder on my... We're just tinning the leads a bit. See, nice and soldered up. And so then I can just come back around to the back side. Oop, what did I just do? <laughs> Make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want... Come on, buddy, where are you? There you go. Ooh, melted that up a bit. You see how I melted the uh, the lead there? That's not great. I'm not happy about that. And then the negative, let's put you right here. Right? You want to do it right? So that resistor, everything's got to connect into the... Okay, so we don't actually need to do that. We'll put you right here. that. And 
get the antenna out of the way. Not the greatest layout, but um, it's okay. Okay, so um, now that we're looking at the back side, now we've tacked all the parts into place. So now everything is where it relatively should live. And if we need to move it, we can, some of the parts. What we need to start doing now is we need to start jumping connections to, to, to send the power, like a flow of water, to the components that need the positive and the components that need the ground, right? So that's what we're going to do. So what's the best way to do that? <clears throat> so let's take a look at what we got on top here. Let's find a nice long um, solder lead or lead from component. Straighten them out like this. This guy. Oop. This guy. Oop. So what I want to do is is something just like that. I want to just make it so that these guys are all connected. So I'm just going to lay down a bead of solder to join them all. And again, try and straighten these out as much as you can. So one way to do this is just trying to tack it into place, right? And then, now that you have it tacked, you can come back around and clean that up. But now just go around to all the components. And it's okay if you bridge those two connections because they're supposed to be on positive together, so no big deal. So let's take a look. What did I just do? I bridged the top. Um, I bridged the capa uh, the top capacitor with the top resistor, and so now I need to make another bridge, which I can just try and bend this guy down a bit. Actually, let's just cut them. Get another piece. See, now I've got to go from here to here. Across like that. And ultimately to the... Uh... Oh, no, I, I can do that with the... Uh... The resistor does that work for me. So, same thing, let's just go tack it into place. Okay. Now, using my needle and pliers, get the lead. Now I want these two leads to be friends. You seeing this all right? Let's move them in a bit. So I'm just going to lay down the iron right on top. Feed in solder. Remove. And so now I made a, a, a bridged connections from the top components all the way over. And then snip the end off here. Okay. Um, now I need to connect the resistor power. I'm sorry, the positive. I'm sorry, no, the, what am I doing? I have to bridge a connection between the, um, the microphone 
Like that. Microphone and the resistor. Makes sense. Okay. So now I've pretty much connected everything except right here on the positive side. This one should be interesting. So now I have to bridge the gap between the power and my variable resistor. Okay, that's it. All right, can you see it? Okay. Now let's gun it in there with some more solder. Let's take a look. <clears throat> so the top, where's that? Hmm. I see. Almost done. Now I need to bridge the connection between the coil and the oh no, that's right. Coil goes to power too, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Gotta be, <coughs> <coughs> gotta be really careful with these that you follow it relatively explicitly. So I'm gonna add some more solder. Big old glob. The reason I'm globbing it up is because I've got to get my um, bridge between the coil and the variable capacitor. So I will do that like so. Come on, buddy. Come on. There we go. Boom. Okay, so now we have this kind of like crazy line that goes around, connects to the coil. Did my wife just go to Bakers and Baristas again? <laughs> I think she did. Okay. So now I'm checking for any bridged. So what I'm looking for is these components. Right, there's a there's this side, and then there's the other lead, right? I'm making sure that we didn't bridge into those gaps and get a short. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now, stick to the easy stuff, and I'm gonna come back through the negative line 
and bring it up to here. This is where it gets complicated, where the resistor is and the coil, because there's a lot of um, parts that need to be jumped together. So it looks like three, four pin here. So I've got to go from the negative to these four guys, or three guys. Three guys? Three guys. Okay, three guys. Pretty easy. Same thing, get some jumper wires. this guy up a bit more. I'm using my pliers to hold the part onto the board. Oh, that's, oh, that's solder. <laughs> How do you do a KFC Chow King Jollibee? Please explain. Because KFC really doesn't have any Filipino food, right? Or is it not about that? It's just about the chicken. That chicken. Yeah, Shinobi, please explain what you mean by a KFC Chow King Jollibee Mukbang. Because that doesn't make any sense to me. So you just, is it just the chicken? Because um, KFC doesn't have Filipino food, right? I mean, at least here in the States it doesn't. It probably doesn't in the Philippines, but here it does not. going around and cleaning up this. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> so what is this guy? That is the antenna. The antenna is supposed to be jumped to the... Is that the coil? <laughs> Jesus. <gasps> I meant you should do one of them because they're... No, I mean, is it is it all at the same time? Is it Jollibee and Chow King and KFC all at the same time? because I've done mukbangs for all of them individually. I believe I have done hollow hollow. How many of my mukbangs have you actually watched? <laughs> no, no offense, but I've done most of those. Yeah, I've done uh, Chow King Hollow Hollow, I've done uh, Jolly Bee Chicken, I've done Jolly Bee Burgers, I've done Jolly Bee Polabok, I've done, I've done a lot, <laughs> just tell you, I've ate a lot of food. Okay. Uh, 
no. I haven't. I don't really do the American food because, believe it or not, it's not very popular. The popular videos for me is Filipino videos. Eating Filipino food um, is way more popular than any of the videos I've I've done in recent in recent time. So I spend a lot of my time trying um, Filipino food, particularly the um, more traditional stuff, because I also like it a little bit more too. A bit more my flavor profile. Oh, that's not going to work at all, is it? the gaps there and there so now oh okay that's pretty easy I have done some Korean foods. Um, I have done sundae. I have done Korean barbecue. I have done many of the Samyang um, noodles. The super spicy ramen. Um, I've done those. Those are actually really good. <laughs> I really like that stuff. Oh, baby, do I like that ramen. Alright, let's bring you two together here. This is coming right along. I'm glad. Okay, so that is the upper. The upper is supposed to connect to uh, these guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, so my wife is trying to get me to have balut, which I may try it next week. Her family, oh, her family loves it. Balut's kind of all over um, Southeast Asia, which her family is from Vietnam. So, um, they're Chinese, but they're from Vietnam. <clears throat> so, she's a fan, to put it mildly. <laughs> they tell me, they're like, oh, we'll get you, um, we'll get you beer battered, uh, Balut. You'll like it, you'll like it. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of the coil. The end of the coil is supposed to connect to that capacitor. Capacitor. I see, which is right there. Okay. And that capacitor. Mm, yep, that seems right.
Okay. Jump these guys. There we go. Sorry, you're going to have to turn this flat for a second to bridge to do this. guy's not wanting to play. There we go. Fluid dynamics. Yeah, it's fluid dynamics. Alright, so those are now connected. Let's take a look at our... Those resistors are supposed to be connected. All four of these should be jumped. They're not yet. So there's three leads right in the middle there, but I just need to kind of make them all go together. Yeah. Fluid dynamics. <laughs> okay. This guy is not connected to anything. What is his deal? Hey man, what's your deal? You are the resistor. The resistor is supposed to connect to the positive. Yep. You are supposed to be jumped as well. A lot of jumping. I've had, um, aside from blue, that's probably the, the most exotic thing that I haven't had yet. A jumper here. I've had a lot of the exotic uh, Vietnamese food, stuff like that. No problem. I don't really have any problem with that. Oh no, <laughs> the little guy woke up. Okay, well let's take a look at where we're at. Yeah, buddy. Oh no, Chinese buffet is bad. I don't like Chinese buffet at all. Hi. High five. No. 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 Um, Chinese buffet is like 
really, really bad quality Chinese food. And I'm sure there's Chinese buffets that are better. What? What? That are better in other areas. But um, not... I mean, the United States has very Americanized Chinese food. So it's, it's not that good. It really isn't. <sighs> okay, Edison, where are we at here? You're really cramping my style, bro. I see some stuff that is not connected. And what are you? Ah, yes. Capacitor. He is. He is a very good baby. Good baby. What are you doing? No. Don't chew on that. Come on now. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Um. Okay, what do we got here? That's it. What do we got? That's right. Oop. The antenna just fell off. Great. That's fine. Yeah, we'll sort that out after. So I think I've got to jump these guys, jump them right into the click. Um, but I don't, there's a capacitor in the middle there. Is there a capacitor? There sure is. Okay, so I don't want to jump all those guys together. That would be bad. Yeah. What's up, bud? Hmm. Okay. You want to go play? Let's go see if we can find your toy. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. I have sushi many times. <laughs> Sit. Here. This you can play with your heart's content. <laughs> All right. So what do we do here? And we did jump that. Okay, that's good. So now we've got to jump the one U farad to the ten K resistor. Let's do that right now. They're now friends. <sighs> that resistor connects to another capacitor. That capacitor connects to the power, which we have done. Okay, so, where are you going, bud? Don't fall. Mommy will be bad at daddy. Same problem here when you have a three-way. You gotta make sure everybody gets equal love. So hold on for one second while I sort this out. That all went to the middle. So you can see I've got pretty blobby, 
discrete blobby solders, right? Because I'm trying to connect three or four devices all together, or components all together. Oh. Yeah? What else do I have that's fun for you to play with? Oh, I've got tons of 3D printed things. Here. So many 3D printed things that failed because the head came off of the dinosaur. Alright, so this little capacitor here. Well, how are you doing, buddy? Who are you supposed to? That's good. We're making progress. I'm wondering if we're done. Where do we finish? Let's make sure you're sorted. You're definitely connected to what you need to be connected to. Maybe not. You also need to... You're connected to the coil. Yeah? Yeah or nah? So yeah, and that lead, and so now you just need to, you need to be on the other end of that coil too, which is over there. Okay, no problem. Okay, so now that end of the coil is connected to positive. This end of the coil is connected to what's supposed to be an antenna. The antenna's gone. The capacitor, yes, which also connects to the lower lead. Wait, what? talking to bud I want to know who you're talking to oh I see okay we got one more one more lead to jump This is going poorly. Oh, God, you stupid. The tip is now magnetized on these pliers, so they want to, like... Is it 
it down. Oh no, it is not a mess. Okay, hopefully sit down. Is that this guy? I think so. I think we're good. Okay. Sit down, bud. Oh, what's that? Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Stop it. Sorry. I realize I'm not focused on you guys. He's having fun. And I guess that's all that matters. Whoa, why? Why? Edison, why? Okay. <laughs> what happened? You went down? Okay, don't cry. I see. All right, so I got a bit of a hot, hot mess here. No, no, you don't want. Got to get this antenna back in. At least sit now for a second. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Hey, Addison, leave this stuff alone, bud. Here, I gave you something to play with. Go play. Go play. Go ahead. Shove off. Shove off, kid. Have I tried to make? Uh, <laughs> no. No, I didn't even know that was a thing. I've made his, uh, I bought one of his rulers, though.
really making me work for this thing. AVE Zen Blaster. I'll have to go look that up. Oh, yeah, I melted the crap out of the shielding. Oh, well. What else did I do? Did I damage that? No, that was just flux. Okay, no. Take a quick look around here and make sure we didn't jump any... Jump any leads where we didn't want to jump leads. Those are okay. So you can see here. See nice and shiny? The, uh, the solders? That's what you're looking for. Still have one that's not? What are you doing, bud? Almost done. Yeah, they, if I'm familiar with the concept, they call that an Annoyatron. Okay. Now, let's look again. Everything should be connected to a friend, <laughs> or a buddy, or... or. What is that guy doing? Is he even connected to anything? No. Uh oh, he wants to go outside. This is his way of telling me he wants to go outside. He walks up and hands me his shoes. Okay. Okay, go away by the door when you're all coming in. Well, I'm going to have to risk it. Let's see um, how far off we are. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Well, to tune it the next time, at least. It took a little bit longer than I expected. Not surprising, though. This prototyping stuff is... It takes a little while. You know what I mean? So. Um, this shed should be the positive... Where's your negative lead? Negative lead is here. So, I should just be able to... All right, we're gonna get dangerous here. We're gonna plug this thing in. I would have tested this more, but given I don't have much time, we're gonna do it ready. Here we go. Hang on to your butts. Oh, come on. Okay. So now I'm going to take. You can't see the voltmeter. There's the voltmeter. So this should be negative. Oh, come on. Everything is helping on messing with me today. <laughs> Okay, it should be negative. Guess what, guys? We've got a circuit, I think, and a mad baby. Okay, you can see that six means that the voltage is, is flowing through. Come here. We did it. We were successful. We did it. Yeah, we were successful. Oh, so that means that we were successful in um, in building the circuit at least. Let me unplug this guy. So, so what I'll do 
is I'll make a standalone video on showing you how to tune this because that in itself is a pain in the butt. Um, I have a recommendation of a good radio that shows you that, that is that is very good at tuning it because it gives you dB loss so you know with your, if you're in range. The problem I have in California is it's a very um, FM dirty town. There's FM signals everywhere. So um, yeah, cool. I'm very excited. All right, so guys, that'll do it for this uh, this video. I'm going to go ahead and take this little one outside so you can play. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Um, look for a standalone video probably this weekend or next week that I show how to tune this thing. And that'll do it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful, interesting. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and feel free to send me them on Facebook or Instagram, Hashnasi everywhere. And we will be recording, like I said, a mukbang this evening, not live, it'll be a proper recording, which I'll edit down and make it nice and punchy, and that should be up tomorrow, uh, Saturday, or Sunday. I'm trying to get it posted uh, Filipino time, so I think that means probably Sunday in the afternoon it'll be ready. Okay, that'll do it. See ya.